1992 season, the Bulls found themselves in an unfamiliar position, standing atop the NBA. And from that lofty vantage point, they saw clearly what lay ahead. As a team, I think all of us understood that we had a great challenge ahead of us because the crown's on your head, the chip's on your shoulder, and people are going to try and knock it off. And forward from Clemson. We knew that everything was going to come out and, and uh, try to dethrone us, uh, if you will, and we just wanted to stay on top. A 6-7 forward from Central Arkansas. Everybody we played was, you know, up and geared up and ready to play us, ready to bring us down. There was a lot of pressure on us, a lot of expectations for us that I think that people really expected us to win. We found out early that they shoot for you a little differently when, when you're the champion. Well, you came out knowing that you're going to face a challenge every night. So we came out with a focus in mind to duplicate, if not uh, exceed what we did the previous year. He drives in. To Michael Jordan. What a finish! What a if the Bulls felt any pressure, they didn't show it. They played from the start as if their storybook season of a year ago had never ended. What a way to start the season! Reeling off 14 wins in their first 17 games, they began as the league's hottest team and simply refused to cool down. Here comes Jordan to Pippen! We're trying to focus on winning streaks. You know, get a three or four game winning streak here. Forget about a loss. Come back, get a three, four, or five game winning streak the next time out. You know, that's the way you have to play this game, and that's kind of our focus. Chicago's success had always focused on Michael Jordan, but this year, more than ever, he would share the spotlight with another superstar. Jordan with it. started taking notice that this wasn't his, you know, so-called one-man team, that there was another guy by the name of Pippen. Pippen to the hole! Oh, what a jam by Pippen! He, more than anyone on our team, played with that, that arrogance. McDaniel! Blocked out of bounds! Scotty Pippen! Once you become a champion, you, you got to walk, you got to carry yourself out like a champion. And with Pippen and Jordan strutting their stuff, the Bulls ran opponents off the court. Michael to his left, gets it, slams it! We get Michael and Scotty going. Here comes Jordan, behind the back, Pippen. What a play, what a play! We're unstoppable. Pippen! Oh well, yes sir, showtime, Michael Scotty. You just can't concentrate just on one person because if you do, and you're trying to watch the left, then the right's gonna put you away. Here comes Jordan. To Pippen, there is a highlight, man. It's like poetry in motion. Michael with a quick step, thinks it goes to Pippen. <laughs> the fan inside you takes over, and you just sit there and watch him. The rest of the NBA could also do little more than watch as the Bulls steamrolled through the league. To Michael, oh, beautiful work. And though Pippen and Jordan captured the headlines, there were other Bulls who were quietly contributing. Horse is, uh, is, is our workhorse. And his brand of work is straightforward in nature. Blue collar. Nice pass inside for Horace Grant, who throws it down. Hard hat, nice bucket. Horace is there again. Gets the rebound. Oh, what a play by Horace Grant. Playing his part to perfection, Grant epitomized the Bulls' selfless credo. I mean, if we're going to do it again, we're going to have to all do it together again. Uh, that's been our philosophy, and it's our team focus that will give us all our individual success. Unified by their common goal, the Bulls were bound together more tightly than ever. We're role players, basically. You try to fit your talents in, and uh, you got to root for one another. Williams! And up! And up! Cross-court, Haji open three! Everybody that comes in has something to offer this team, has a strength. Together, the Bulls overpowered opponents and made it look easy. They're going crazy at the Madhouse on Madison. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Tries to spin. Does. Grant with the block. And here come the Bulls. Here they come on the run. Oh, yeah! 
piling up win streak after win streak, the Bulls stampeded into the All-Star break with the league's best record. And even in Orlando, they continued to shine. The head coach of the Eastern Conference All-Stars, Bill Jackson. His tongue is out. Craig Hodges has won his third consecutive shootout title. The second half of the season would prove to be no different than the first. Their play was as devastating as it was dazzling, and expectations soared higher than ever. But again, they would shrug off the pressure, continue to win, and have fun doing it. Just one of the greatest feelings when you're out there and everything is clicking, all cylinders are rolling, and we're just one of the toughest teams to beat and one of the greatest teams to watch. Go with it. Go with it. You don't know where that ball is going to go. You don't know where the pass is going to come from. Inside, Scott Williams almost pushed out of bounds. The Purdue! And it basically just destroys the other team because they're always calling timeouts, trying to figure out what they can do. George. Oh, yeah, where did he go? They went in ball game after ball game after ball game. You see the time running out. He lets it fire. Yeah. It felt like kings. Jordan to Horace to finish. It felt bang, bang, bang. indestructible. have now clinched home court advantage throughout the NBA playoffs. Boom! This place is going crazy, Red. You got it. With a season full of cheers echoing in their ears, the Bulls readied themselves for the postseason. With a near record 67 wins, they had clearly established themselves as the overwhelming playoff favorite. But it had been a long year of defending their crown, and they knew that a fresh set of challenges awaited them. Well, I got an ample warning from various friends and coaches around the league, you know, the pressure's all on you guys, and, uh, you know, you've got to um, have pressure to play not to lose rather than play to win sometimes when you're the champ. Their first opponent was a team with nothing to lose. Making their first playoff appearance, the Miami Heat could not have been more excited to face the defending champions. Sometimes, but Pep Pippen is going to stay with Clyde in most cases. We were very confident that we could, you know, sweep through Miami. But we knew it was going to be a struggle for us. Uh, no matter how well you do against the team throughout the regular season, the playoffs are a different challenge. As had become their trademark, the Bulls took to the task ahead of them with single-minded efficiency. Jordan drives again. can't afford to exert energy playing four or five games against Miami. That's a team that we had to go in and beat three straight and get on to the next round. Because you don't know what's going to happen up the road. After taking both games in Chicago, the Bulls look to complete their sweep in Miami. For the Heat, just making the playoffs was cause for celebration. But as the game began, Jordan quickly stole the show as he staged a one-man scoring exhibition. Beautifully done. Be ready to help with Jordan now. Comes off the bench, be ready to help. But no matter what the Heat tried, oh, man. Oh. Jordan was not to be stopped. Going over, around, and through defenders, he poured in an incredible 56 points to lead the Bulls emphatically into the second round. This is the prime time. This is the best time of the season. You know, a regular season was a step to this point. Uh, you got to elevate your game. And uh, yeah, I feel I have. Uh, I feel I have to continue. Following their decisive first round knockout of Miami, the Bulls would step into the ring next with a tough and hungry contender from New York. The Knicks awaited the Bulls with a brash game plan in mind and dreams of a championship in their hearts. Pat Riley says, believe we're going to win. We didn't work hard for seven and a half months just to get past the first round. From the opening tip, the tone of the series was set. Knowing 
if they could not hope to outrun the Bulls. The Knicks would attempt to overpower them. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Huh? He thought him on purpose. Yeah. You guys are running away from your offense. Don't run away from your offense. Frantically trying to regroup, Chicago struggled to counterattack. But New York always seemed to have an answer. Chicago had been taken by surprise. And as the Knicks continued to work their strategy to perfection, the Bulls were helpless to stop them. A stunning upset would belong to New York as they dealt Chicago a humbling defeat on their home court. Okay. Game Don't one had been a rude wake-up call. Okay. Now remember the energy that got us here. We've got to rebuild the momentum as you guys have your little thing. We've got about half an hour here with the momentum. But in game two, Pat Riley's troops could no longer rely on the element of surprise. Now it would be the Bulls who would dictate the tempo as they worked their offense to perfection. Here's Paxson spotting up for three. Yes! The shot finds BJ again. He looks inside. He's double teamed. Splits it in the lane. Hangs. Hits! In this game, the Bulls would play the role of aggressor. Beating the Knicks with quick hands. You like that call, right, Mace? And quick feet. Coaching step up. BJ with a steal. He's going to race against Anthony. Back to Harris. What a play by BJ. Timeout, Knicks. Listen to this crowd. The Bulls had regained their championship form. And as the series shifted to New York for game three, they continued to outrun and outplay their slower opponents. Pippen comes up with it on the run. He's bumped. Drives to the hole. Lays it in. The Bulls had repulsed the Knicks' attack. And taking a 2-1 series lead, they seemed ready to dispatch their tormentors. But though the Knicks were down, they were far from out. People think because the Bulls are up, we're supposed to lay down and die because the Bulls are the world champion. We're supposed to just lay down and just let them do whatever they want to us. Hey, this is a game. This is a man's game. You know, all we want is what they have and what they are. That's what championship teams are about. They got to take on all comers. And the Knicks would prove to be an unexpectedly rugged contender. <laughs> They came out and they were being the aggressor and trying to initiate confrontations. And all of a sudden you knew it was going to be a long series because they, uh, they found a real comfortable style in being aggressive. The Knicks' war of attrition was beginning to show its effects. They were physically beating us up. And then it got to the point where we started getting mentally tired. Battered and bruised, the Bulls were becoming frustrated. And as Chicago seemed to weaken, New York grew stronger. What you have to understand is that they were playing some good basketball at the time. That was, that was a bad thing. Is that, uh, uh, it'd be different if they were coming in and just trying to beat us up and not playing very well. And they weren't getting good performances out of people over there, but they were. Taking two of the next three games from Chicago, New York would even the series. Go, go. Yes, and it counts! Oh, we are seeing one of his extraordinary... The stunned Bulls would be forced to head home for a decisive seventh game. Who would have thought it would come to this? The seventh game between the Knicks and the Bulls? The Knicks' ambush had taken its toll. And the Bulls were feeling the pain and the pressure. The whole season was riding on that one particular game. And uh, my proclaimed dream team, you know, one game 48 minutes from now could all be over with without us having a chance to repeat. For the first time, the Bulls' quest for a second title was in doubt. A loss now, and their magnificent season would be remembered only for unfulfilled expectations. No tomorrow, no tomorrow, let's go. Hey, let's go for it all. Let's go. 
What time is it? Game time! They had underestimated the Knicks' resolve, but with their championship on the line, the Bulls were at their determined best. Relying more on force than finesse, the Knicks tried desperately to muscle their way back into the game. But the focused Bulls were undaunted. X is one of those players that tries to go out and intimidate you. And I wasn't backing down from his intimidation. I go both ways. Don't, don't start. Don't start. Hey, don't start. I'm telling you. Now, McDaniel wants a piece of Pippen. Jake O'Donnell. There comes a time we have to make a stand, and we had to make a physical stand against New York. Jason now Jordan in McDaniel's face. And there's a technical on both teams. When I spoke up for Scotty, at that particular time, it was the support of the whole team, not just myself, uh, that we believe in you. We're not going to let someone come in and actually try to take what we feel you have. And, you know, you got to be strong as well as we're going to be strong beside you. It was good on his part, you know, to have a teammate or someone to be able to step in and say, hey, no more the BS. We're ready for anything you guys ready this out. Fortified by their unity, the Bulls decisively took Closing out the series, Chicago gratefully put this unexpectedly grueling test of their championship medal behind them. The Chicago Bulls have defeated the New York Knicks 110 I think the New York series did a lot as far as uh, finding out what we were really made of. It tested our characters to see if we could respond to adversity. Well, I think this team has outstanding character. I think they understand how they have to support each other, both mentally and physically. But I think the character ultimately sets this team apart from the, from the other teams in the league right now. While New York had tried to overpower Chicago, their next opponent, the Cleveland Cavaliers, would now try to outwit them. We had a great deal of respect for Cleveland, not because they were going to come in and knock our blocks off, maybe like the New York Knicks did, but because of their basketball skills and ability and their size. The air of invincibility that had marked the regular season was gone. Chicago 0 for 11 tonight. They have yet to hit a field goal. And the Bulls would again be forced to fight for their survival. Unable to solve Cleveland's disciplined half-court offense, Chicago resorted to a relentless inside assault led by Michael Jordan. But playing at this tempo was playing into Cleveland's hands. And after four games, the series was knotted at two. With neither team giving ground in game five, the series was still either teams to win. But that was about to change. It's one of those series that went back and forth, back and forth, until we finally um, read their team. And if we get a chance to adapt our game and read a team, it's over for them. With a quarter left in this pivotal game, the Bulls were ready to make their move. The starters would begin the assault. The Chicago Bulls on fire! But the bench would finish it. B.J. Einstock, left hand with a three and off the window. B.J. with nine. With B.J. Armstrong and Cliff Levingston pushing the Bulls' attack into overdrive, the Cavaliers simply couldn't keep up. Needing just one more win to complete their long journey back to the finals, Chicago was relentless. Tonight, the game we've all been waiting for. You got a classic basketball game with two very desperate and determined teams. Though Cleveland fought valiantly, the focused Bulls methodically closed out the series. Oh, what a look from Jordan finding Grant. I think it was a mission that we'd be at Portland to play for the championship. But along the way, we had to get through those other obstacles, and we did. Uh, not easily, not, not in a pretty manner, but maybe it's a test of character that uh, the team was still able to regroup itself despite disappointment and, uh, and get here. And I, I think that's who we are.
As the Bulls waited to play for their second straight title, Michael Jordan took time to collect a second straight award of his own. Three MVPs, six straight scoring titles. You are simply the standard by which basketball excellence is measured. Congratulations. With their MVP leading them, the Bulls were ready to take on the Trailblazers. Good evening, basketball fans, wherever you may be. Welcome to the NBA Finals. Here we go. Portland and Chicago. It was almost inevitable. They were the favorites in November, and now they meet in June. We're all ready for this game, and the noise level here at the stadium will soon be earth-shattering. The Bulls trying to do what few have done before, and that is repeat. Let's go, boys. Let's go, man. The Trailblazers on a mission, trying to prove that they belong. The world has been waiting two years for this matchup. The feeling that we have right now is like, like bungee jumping. Standing on that tower, standing on that bridge. It's all about, baby. Let's play. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Do you have any questions at all? Just play the game, we'll referee. Have a good game, guys. Have a good series. Having completed their arduous journey through the playoffs, the Bulls entered the finals with a feeling of relief. Jordan, baseline jump pass. But with Terry Porter starting them off, it was the Blazers who broke quickly from the gate. Lost the dribble off his foot. Three on two for the Blazers. Flexed the ball away. So Porter beginning to fly all over the court. Porter with the open shot. And the Blazers have hit their first seven field goal attempts. You haven't got in rhythm yet. You've got to keep, keep pushing to find your rhythm. Chicago would find its rhythm in the person of Michael Jordan, who was about to answer the Blazers' hot shooting, and much more. Unleashing a new weapon from his arsenal, Jordan single-handedly took over the game. Jordan for three more, hits! Boy, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. And that young fella is hot. Come on, let's go now! Come on, we need a spurt here, we gotta defend him, let's go! We gotta get back and defend him, we gotta get good shots out here! Despite the Blazers' plans, on this night, no defense in the world could have halted the aerial barrage to come. Jordan would drill six three-pointers and drive a stake into the Blazers' hearts. Pippen, two men to beat, drives for the basket, goes to the left, follow Michael Jordan! Jordan, with his magic carpet, threw it down! He's, he's everywhere, everywhere. He's, he's everywhere! Ah, he's in a frenzy here. And a Jordan fire to the three! Oh, no! <laughs> I don't believe it! Three-pointers from Jordan! Chicago fans had witnessed one of playoff history's most spectacular performances. And the second half would be merely a curtain call. He wants to run. Four on two break. He leads Horace Grant with a slam jam. What a start for the defending world champions of the NBA. As the Bulls completed the romp, the story of the night was, of course, Michael Jordan. 
I started running for that three-point line. I felt a great rhythm. It felt like a free throw, really, you know, from that distance. You know, I don't think you can just sit back and, and say, ah, and wow, and woo, and, you know, just like a little kid out there, you know. Everything he threw up, he hit. He was hot, and uh, we all knew it. He knew it, and he just uh, was going to go out there. I don't think he was going to miss from two, from three, or from half court range. You know, he just had that feeling. There's a lot of series where a game is goes like this the first game, the second game is totally different. It better be different. <laughs> I, I know we're better than this, believe me. Entering game two, the Trailblazers optimistically hoped for a new beginning, and their strategy was apparent. Every time Jordan had the ball, he would find himself surrounded by Blazers. An emotionally charged Portland team tried to overwhelm Chicago with sheer hustle. Up the long jumper, air balls it wide right. Drexler dies on the end, and Buck Williams scores! And that may be the wake-up call for the Blazers. Deflected away again, and a tip and a script at midcourt. Picked back up by Portland down court. Drexler oh! over! Bill Cartwright with a thunder slam! And suddenly, Portland showing more muscle than they have in the past. We gotta get the ball moving. We're standing around. Taking looks, get that ball, move it. I'm making them work hard enough on defense. To ignite their sputtering offense, Jordan began to set up his teammates. Cooley picking apart Portland's defense. Cross-court pass, pass it over for three. Get it again! Get it again! Jordan just holding the ball, dribbling with the right hand, signaling with the left, starts his move, wheels in the right corner, Hanson fires. The fourth quarter would see Jordan begin to look for his own shot. And as they stretched their lead to 10, the Bulls seemed to have everything going their way. Now there's a steal by Pippen, foul on the backcourt. And if it's on Drexler, that's six. It is. Titus fouled out. It just gets worse and worse for the Trailblazers. Nothing in my mind told me that this team would be able to stay with us without a leader like Clyde Drexler. Uh, it was just right there saying, you guys are going to win this game, just finish. But finishing the Blazers would prove to be more difficult than it seemed. I'll call them MJ, and that's a four on my 23 in the back. Oh, Des Kersey just called a technical on Michael Jordan. That was not a true statement, but you were talking about me. And I don't talk about you. Jordan's temper had flared, but it was Portland that would catch fire. Playing with renewed passion, Portland charged back into the game, and the stunned Bulls could only sit by and watch. And the air suddenly has gone out of the sellout crowd at the Chicago Stadium. Having squandered their lead, the Bulls again looked to Jordan. Underneath, Jordan Payne scoops the ball. He was facing the other way. He was facing the opponent's basket. There is Butler. Yes! He's tied the game at 97. All right, here we go. It's down to this. 13 and 2 ten seconds to play. Michael, one on one. He takes the move. Stutter step move. Pull up jumper. Top the rim, no good. Rebound. Chicago. The seemingly impossible had happened. The Bulls had lost control of the game, and even in overtime, they could not get it back. With Danny Ainge leading the way, Portland would steal the game and the precious home court advantage. Ainge moves, gives cross court back to Terry, back to three from the left side, and scores! And that might be a backbreaker with a minute and a half to go. Suddenly, it's Portland by six. Way to go, baby! Oh, what a pass from Porter, finding Ainge! Portland Trailblazers with a dramatic come from behind effort. It's a great game. We had every opportunity to win it, and I'm sure we're going to look back and uh, you know rue this a little bit tomorrow, tonight. Uh, I think they gave they gained a little bit of momentum from the uh, the technical foul that I received, and uh, that from that point on, it just kind of went downhill. This one's just a little hard to take because you know we just really gave it away.
After Friday's stirring come from behind overtime win, Portland has achieved what most experts said they needed to split the first two in Chicago and come home even. Big concern by many people. Bulls' ability to bounce back after the devastating loss in game number two. Do they have enough time to get themselves straightened out? The Blazers going to smoke those Bulls. The Portland Trail Blazers are 8 and 0 in this building in the playoffs. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or Sybil or whatever, boy, you just don't know which Bulls team is going to show up for which game. It's not going to be the, the guy who scores the most points is going to win this series. It's the team that's going to win the series. The best team is going to win the series. The best team is us. I look for Portland to win the next game easily, Joe. We built a circle around ourselves and said, we're going to stay in this circle. And no matter what goes on outside of this circle, we're not concerned with it. It was our time to really go out and shine and open up this series the way we should have did, the way we wanted to do. Entering Portland's den, Chicago was all business. And building an early lead, they quickly showed the Blazers that game two was only a memory. Jordan, joined by Fox area this side, turn around, puts it up, he hits. Yes! John Paxson has shot the ball very well. Started that in. Get back in. Possession by possession now. Come on now. Raising their intensity, the Blazers made a statement of their own. Kersey, quarter, Trexler up the middle. He jumps! Rips! City, baby! That gets the crowd going. Drexler goes in low on the block to Duckworth. He bumps and bangs. Drop steps on Cartwright. Put it in. With both teams having made their run, the Bulls held a narrow lead. Now the game would settle into a shifting struggle of competing strategies. Bulls stop! Don't stand out here and watch him! Cut through him! Get some activity going! Left side, Kersey whips it baseline, back for a for the hanging jam! Get your hands out and get ready for an interception. Back to Porter, shovel pass to Robinson, one step to the left, he lost it on the way up. Stolen away by Pippen. Pippen on a break, three on two. Hey, oh my! Pippen scored! That's the Pippen that they've been waiting for. Let's run the floor, come on! Let's... And Duckworth off the ball. Here's Porter leading Trexler. Wide open basketball. Don't worry about it, I'm gonna be a threat. You're rotating. All right. I'm, I'm in the post. I'm in the post. The lead is 11. Paxson out front, spins away from Porter on the dribble drive. Gives to Michael Jordan, posting up on the right side, jump shot at Drexler's face, and he scores! With less than a quarter to go, the Bulls held grimly to the lead. But the inevitable Portland run was still to come. Now the Blazers trying to poise themselves to make a run. And the crowd comes pumping back to life because of the comeback made by the Blazers in game two. The Bulls know this team can come back. Over to Ainge. Ainge fakes a three-pointer. Gets to the foul line. Puts it up. Fills it with the right hand. Game. Up the front of the rim. Rebound. Williams. Long lead pass to Drexler. Now to Kersey who fumbles. Gets it back. And lays it in with a reverse layup. Chicago wants to talk about it. Boy, this is a carbon copy of game two. Here they come. They're rotating. All right. So you got to hold off in here. They're going to let them beat the hell out of you. So you might as well be used to it. And just be strong. With this crucial game on the line, the Bulls looked for strength inside themselves and each other. This time, there would be no letdown. They were ready. Here's the first block by Grant. Takes right, drives left, rolls it up, oh! Drexler on a move against Pippen to the baseline, runs into him, off, that's a foul on Drexler. Jordan dribbling down the clock underneath. Horace Grant wide open, slams it down. To Michael, he shifts gears down the lane, ducks in, layup, got it. Jordan ducking inside. Ainge cross court bounce pass, stolen by Paxson away from Porter. And Paxson lays it in. And this one is all but over in Portland. And the crowd heads to the parking lot here in the City of Roses. The Chicago Bulls going up two games to one in this best of seven.
As they prepared for game four, the Bulls were once again feeling relaxed and loose. The pressure was now on Portland, and Chicago could breathe a welcome sigh of relief. That's bad sound. That's bad sound. Clang. Remember what your mindset is for this next game coming up. Rest and recuperate. All right. All right. Game four, let's go. Cruising to an early lead, the Bulls maintain their upbeat mood. Three, yes. Three on two. Pippen with a change of pace. Scoring at will against the reeling Blazers, the Bulls look to end the contest early. And the Bulls really putting it on, the Trail Blazers in the early going. But what had started as confidence began to turn to carelessness. Unable to recapture their rhythm, the Bulls were suddenly struggling. Well, that was un esque because Michael Jordan's tired, Joe. There's no question about it. With fatigue setting in, the Bulls' grip on the game was loosening, and the Blazers began to smell blood. Over play, it goes in low to Scott Williams, got around Cliff Robinson, and is foul hard. Pushed him. That is a personal foul on number three. That is a flagrant foul, penalty one. Jerome Kersey's dramatic foul brought the Blazers to a frenzied pitch, and the Bulls began to get a nightmarish feeling of deja vu. Blazers executing flawlessly now, and the Bulls out of sync. Underneath, Horace goes up, blocked by Cliff Robinson, and Robinson tears it out of there. Great defensive play by Robinson. Oh, and the Bulls have become unraveled here. Michael Jordan thought he had time. You get in the championship round and you're you're playing over 100 games in eight and a half months. It's a it's a grind. You know, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, we'll try to put a team away. We haven't been able to do it. I don't think they can get their bodies to do it because their minds are not telling their bodies. And the mind, Joe, controls the body. The biggest challenge that we had was within ourselves. You know, fighting with ourselves to try to maintain that edge, and that's been the case basically. We've been fighting with ourselves. Winning time. It's usually George time, but it hasn't been tonight. So the Trailblazers tying the series at two. Well, we had that game in hand and let it slip. That's the way we feel about it tonight, that uh, we let a great opportunity pass us by. That's the way it is. I didn't win the whole year. I say, you know, it's the game they gave away. When they let them keep giving these games away, we'll take them. We found out in this playoff that it's been a, a roller coaster, one game up, one game down. But this team has never lacked confidence. Uh, that's been a mark of this team, being able to bounce back when a little adversity has, has hit us. Hit the ball, quick drop, step around, quarter slam, jam. And now Michael fires a three and scores. Pippen with the slam and the bucket. Beautiful move. And here's Jordan on the pull off. Yes. Ball batted up in the air, stolen by Pippen. Pippen brings it down, two and one. Jordan on the right way. Pippen oh, oh, yeah. and jams over Drexler. Oh. Oh. Everything's working for Chicago. With Pippen and Jordan leading the way, the Bulls began game five as if every possession was their last. Jackson, yes! Jordan setting up front line. Yes! Oh, what a rejection! Yeah, boy! Blazers on the move. Drexler, he turns it over. Blazers in the early going look unsettled. A technical foul. Portland's fans could only watch in despair as the Bulls dismantled the Blazers. Side, away, jumper, he scores. Oh, Michael turned an ankle, slipped. But Chicago would face some anguish of their own. The franchise is sitting down on the bench holding his left ankle. Bill Jackson better talk about this. Get yourself under control, both of you. We need you. And 
And Chicago going bit through a little bit of a, a gut check right now. But even with their leader sidelined, the Bulls refused to falter. In this game, Chicago would not give Portland any second chances. Portland was helpless before Chicago's onslaught, and it only got worse. Here comes Jordan back in, still favoring that ankle, but he's going to play some more. Wheels it out back to Jordan. Michael fires a three. He was open. He buries it. A dagger. A dagger. With Jordan providing the finishing touch, the Bulls' triumph was complete. They had regained control of the series. Take it back to the city. And they were going home. The defending world champions are one victory away from making it two NBA titles in a row. This is the 104th game of the year for the Bulls, including the playoffs and regular season. That's a long, long haul, and it could all end here this afternoon. As they approached game six, the Bulls look to become the first Chicago team in almost 30 years to win a championship at home, to become only the fourth NBA franchise to win back-to-back -back titles, and to end the personal quest that had tested their spirit and their will. Last year was, uh, it was a honeymoon. It was a kiss of, uh, you know, the beloved almost. This year's has been an odyssey. It's been a journey filled with uh, travail and pitfalls, and it's been tough. It's been a real hard road. And as the game began, it quickly became clear that once again, Chicago would be traveling on treacherous terrain. Pass stolen by Porter. Two on one, out of Drexler. Drexler slams it to the left side. Fighting for their playoff lives, the Blazers came out determined not to let Chicago celebrate at their expense. This is Portland's brand of basketball. They have the tempo going in their direction. And it's all happened because of their hard work. And here's a steal by Jerome. Mercy, mercy, he's been everywhere. Jerome Percy with a magnificent first quarter, and he has really hurt the boss. Kersey had ignited the Blazers while the Bulls struggled to find their own spark. Come on, boys! Let's go! Come on, now! Now Jordan starts to walk the dribble to the right side. Drexler reached out to push it. Jordan drives to the basket. Double punch, lays it up short. Go oh, good ball, knocked out of bounds by Michael. Maxson goes inside the cart, right on the bounce pass. High post right. He pumps, wheels in on Duckworth. Forgot the ball! Joe, Chicago is in disarray. They're not... Down inside of Michael Jordan, overplayed, tipped by Drexler to Porter, down the right side of Clyde Drexler, gets to Kersey for a freewheeling slam, jam! Chicago has to really be careful, Joe, that they don't dig too big a hole here. With over half the game behind them, the Bulls found the hole deepening, and the Blazers were getting ready to bury them. Tipman boys, oh, hard he is taking off! Blazers right now just hammering the Bulls into submission. Blazers with their biggest lead of the night. And you basically, at, at some point in the third quarter, knows which team is going to win. But I don't care what kind of heroics they might have in mind. And I don't think Chicago can pull this one out. I really don't. Where Jordan gets it. Michael on Kersey and Porter blocked underneath by Drexler. Why Drexler blocks the shot attempted by Michael Jordan. Game seven, if necessary, will be played right here Wednesday night in Chicago. At this point, it certainly appears it will be necessary. Once again, Chicago faced the prospect of letting a pivotal game slip away. In just 12 minutes, the series would be tied, and the weary Bulls championship fate would be at the mercy of a single game. They knew that the time was now, and as they had all season long, they would find strength when they needed it most. When we've been put down, we've always responded well, and when we're down, we're at our best because we have an understanding on our team that in order for us to win, um, we need each other. Chicago down by 15, start of the fourth period. In Chicago's lineup. Second team with the exception of Pippen. Left-winner, Hanson fires a three and scores! Bobby Hanson, that's one reason he's in there. He dropped the ball, got it again, and Hanson strips him of the ball. Five gets it to King. King coming in, and he 
is annihilated inside. Bulls asking for a flagrant foul. The referee has called a flagrant foul. They'll shoot these free throws and get the ball out of bounds on the side. A tip and back in on Rexler. Third, double, triple team. Spin through it and lays it in. Oh, that was an un unbelievable shot. So the Bulls have come out. Situation where you've got some momentum going now. Just keep playing hard. Load of Pippen who's posted up on Drexler. Spins to the baseline. Puts it up and in. The crowd is going nuts. Right now, Chicago on a 10 to 2 run. Drexler double dribbles the ball. Pippen bothered him. CJ in the paint bubble. Gets it back. Hurt. Shoots. Score. The lead is down to five. Not back to BJ on the right side. Down low to Stacey King. King backs in. Knocks down Buck Williams. Hurt. Shoots. Score. You believe this? Chicago in the midst of a 14-2 run. And Jordan re-enters the fray. Having all but erased the Blazers' lead, the Bulls were on the verge of completing one of the greatest comebacks in finals history. It's Drexler, foot fake, starts to move, beats Clyde inside, hooks up a floater and scores! It's a one-point ball game! Michael Jordan! The championship trophy was almost in their grasp. And fittingly, Pippen and Jordan would help them reach out and grab it. Superman back in the building! Superman is back in the building! Putting the Blazers behind them, the Bulls brought their long championship journey to an end. You can feel it, they can smell it right now. They're seconds away from winning back to back world championships. Their second title run had been even more demanding than the first, and now they could finally enjoy it. Let the party begin! One is great, two is almost impossible. Congratulations, Chicago. This is the happiest moment I've ever had here. Oh, it feels so good. to the hometown clinching since back in 1938. And we're told they are bringing the championship trophy to the floor. And when uh, the trophy makes its way out here, they will go wild. Unbelievable as they come back out to an adoring crowd and nobody has left the building. I've never seen Michael like this up on the scores table. played on some teams with some guys who always cared about themselves. <laughs>